Encounter the delectable food and wine of Scossa Restaurant and Lounge, where you will savor the classic Northern Italian cuisine created by chef Giancarlo Tondin. With an emphasis on quality, only the freshest ingredients are selected to create cuisine that reinvigorates traditional Italian recipes. Experience the sophisticated chic decor and lively ambiance of the Scossa Dining Room, Bar and Lounge, or Dine al Fresco at the Scossa Cafe, and enjoy the picturesque charm of Eastern Historic Town Center. While coat and tie are not required, attractive attire will fit perfectly with the cosmopolitan style at Scossa. Buongiorno. Hi, I'm Will Howard. Good day. That's it in Italian. We're here at Scosa Restaurant. Scosa Restaurant, and we are with Chef Giancarlo Tondin. Buongiorno to you, Mr. Awa. Thank you. And t tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, my background. So, I grew up in the Alps of uh, Italy, in Trentino Alto Adige, with a little bit of luck, uh, nice people, and uh, find a nice job in Venice to the Cipriani family, which they gave me a big opportunity to travel the world and uh, end up in New York and spent uh, 20 years of my career. How many years? 20. 20, you, you in New York. young for 20 years. Uh, there is one of those professions where you start young, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's where I met my family, uh, my wife and three children. And then of course, another, I guess I ran out of luck. After the 20 years of uh, New York, uh, I discovered Tabo County. And that's where we come and open Scossa. So, so your, your partner's here at Scotia? Yes, please. Okay, great. Now tell me, what year did you open? We opened in November 2005. Okay. And this is, we just started our fourth year. That's great. Oh, it's now been we, a great uh, we, we saw your excitement. commercial just before we opened up here. Tell me, what kind of car was that? Oh my goodness. I think it was a Lamborghini or Lamborghini. something. Lamborghini? Yeah. How'd you find That's, a Lamborghini uh, in Tulsa County? Oh, I, well, it was a... A customer. It was a customer, but in the same time, though, it would be, I mean, what I see in Tabo County, I find more car of a dream car true. <laughs> than anywhere else. That's true. <laughs> Tell me, what are you going to fix for us today? Uh, today, actually, I'm connecting my hometown to Tabo County. Okay. And uh, what we have, uh, definitely we don't have the water in the Alps, but we hunting. And uh, in Tabo County, I discovered year after years, our great area for hunting is, besides fishing. And so I want to introduce uh, one of our uh, very uh, famous dishes, uh, chicken cacciatora, oh, which okay. uh, cacciatora means hunter. Okay. Uh, I think it's great for home cooking too, because uh, it's easy to find a good uh, free range chicken in, in this area and vegetable through farmer, farmer um, uh, market or either your own grown vegetable, which uh, the recipe will take a very s simple things of uh, carrot, celery, leeks, and mushroom. So did you hunt down this chicken? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we got he's, lots of chickens quick, in Tala County. He's quicker than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's do it. Okay, great. Tell us what we're gonna do. So what we got is a, a nice free, young free range chicken, whole if it's possible, but if you feel comfortable or uncomfortable cutting it, you can get it at your butcher and ask him to cut it in eight pieces. And uh, as a uh, ingredient for the sauce, we got some uh, onion, carrot, mushroom, which you can use any kind of mushroom. Either sh right now I'm using like some white, white, white mushroom or you can use chanterelle or shiitake mushroom or any opportunity too in the summer if they are available. Some celery, fresh tomato, parsley, leeks, a little bit of garlic and uh, rosemary. And then perhaps uh, to finish the sauce, I got some uh, white wine, some light chicken stock, a cup of uh, tomato sauce and olive oil. For the side order, I'm gonna use something really from my hometown where I grew up. Uh, polenta, which is connected to the Tabo County too again because of the farming of uh, um, um, maize, 
and uh, and corn, corn and corn. corn yeah, corn, made corn. So uh, again, I find all these little things which they're kind of related to my very youth. Good. Very, in very a way. thoughtful. Very thoughtful. So uh, what we're going to start doing is I'm having some uh, boiling water. Okay. Getting ready for the polenta, which I set up. That will be one of the first things we do because uh, polenta you can serve it actually either fresh, soft, or grill hot. And because we are at the beginning of the summer, I would just like to kind of grill it a little okay. bit Good. instead of serving it uh, fresh. So the water is going to get to boil, but in the same time, I'm going to get ready and uh, cut up the chicken while the water, which uh, the way I cut the chicken, I like to do that. I like to make it, some people, you might love to have the bones and things, but I like to kind of serve it a little bit off the bone. And I leave the bone only on the thigh. So I start from the breast to the center, to the soft bone, and I follow just the body of the chicken. And I cut it through. So technically you're having a half chicken like this, which is soak nice the sauce after you saute it. And the little bone in the thigh and the drumstick will give it a, a very good flavor. You've done this before? A few times, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I went and a, a little too knife. fast. So I split the breast and the legs. I remove some of the exit skin. And I split the legs in between the thigh and the, the things. A little bit off the little bone and put it down. I split the breast in half. And doing the same thing to the other half that will give me the eight pieces. Very good. Good. Perfect. So at this moment we have the chicken cut. I'm going to remove the seed from the chicken which we don't need this anymore. And perfect. So yes. at this moment, uh, the water is getting to boil. I will pour like a two tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil in the water. Uh, with the polenta, it's not actually a recipe where you can really say how oh, much flour going. So technically, you might want to use your judgment a pinch of salt. So boiling water, I got the flour in my hand and I pour it very lightly into the water. This is just flour, right? This is just, a, I'm using right now a white polenta, which uh, we have two polenta available. One is yellow, one is white. This is, uh, this is it? This is it. And actually another adding on to the table county, you can find all this fine Italian product at Piazza which is a tabo center, and you can find all the flour and the cuts. So you can really experience, uh, besides joining us as Cosa, and experience a great friendly home dinner yes. with the Italian product. Look at that. So the polenta is coming together. It will take uh, like a few seconds just to get a little bit stronger from the flour. At the same time, I start eating up uh, a saute pan to roast in the chicken, and then while the, the chicken will cook in, we're gonna go and start preparing the sauce. Okay. So at the same time, I might going back to the chicken and season it. I got a pinch of salt. Uh, you can sprinkle the chicken with a tiny little bit of a flour, but you don't have to if uh, people is gluten free and things like that. So you can even roast it just plain. Or actually, if you want to alternate a little bit the, the recipe, you can actually even cook the chicken in the barbecue grill. And then add in the sauce cacciatora in top. A little pepper. I'm going to use a little ton. Three tablespoons of oil, or oh yeah, extra olive oil in the pan. I'm turning myself to the pan. The polenta is coming along well, it started boiling. You might want to simmer the polenta because it's very, you gotta be careful in the, in the temperature. 
I'm putting down the chicken from the skin side first. I'm putting down the chicken from the skin side because I, I like to get a nice crispy the crispiness to the skin and a nice gold color. So this will take a few minutes. At the same time, I have an oven on at 350, 350 degrees, where I'm gonna, once I color the chicken, I'm gonna put it into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes to cook. Okay. At this moment, I'm having the polenta ready. And because I'm gonna grill it, I'm gonna pour it in a plastic container. So I'm pouring it in a plastic container and let it cool. And this is something, that maybe this is the first step you might wanna do. You can even do it early in the morning. And let it chill, because then we're gonna just bring it out and slice it to, to grill it. So the chicken seems like it's coming along well. That's good. At this point, we will go back and start the sauce. So for the sauce, we need a, a nice carrot, onion, some celery, a little bit of rosemary, a few mushrooms, a few nice ripe tomato, a one clove of garlic, and a little bit of leeks. I'm gonna start simmering a little bit of a pan. Just getting ready. Good. Okay. Nice. So I'm having all my vegetable line up. And uh, the way I'm gonna cut it, either you can chop it, which for when I'm saying chopping, it will be like a, a small dice like this. Or if you would like to have, like today, what I'm gonna try to do is uh, cutting the vegetable julienne. So it's a little bit of a, more of a garnish. And julienne, it means like a small, tiny slice like that. So I got some of the leeks done. I'm gonna cut some of the celery. And I cut it again the same way. Trying to use a little bit a uh, few seconds just to turn the chicken and put the chicken in the oven. Okay. Like you see, it's getting there. Nice, the skin, is, nice. the skin is nice and gold. It will go in the oven now for 15 minutes at 350. Turn the stove down and continue my preparation for the sauce. So I got the leeks, I got the celery. I will split the onion. What and of, what kind of onion is? Oh, it? this is a white, white onion, local, and you go with the season two uh, for what onion is available. But you can use a red onion, Spanish onion, and I just cut a leek, like again in a julienne style. I got some carrot. I peel it. I've removed the end. And for the carrot, you gotta a little bit be careful. You wanna create a little bit of a base because it's been around a vegetable. It's a little bit dangerous when you're cutting it. And, and trying to cut down a little bit slice, like a thin slice, is something like you wanna do it kinda slow. And then you pile again the little slice. Oh, cool. And you cut the julienne style, which is a little bit like a matches uh, size. I took the mushroom and I took carinet julienne. Perfect. And I take the garlic. I squish it a little bit. And chop it. Perfect. I will leave the tomato for a few minutes now, and uh, I will go back to the scale. It's a nice temperature. Three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now, for the vegetable, you want a nice st uh, start with a medium heat saute, but then you want to kind of simmer it. 
So we let the vegetable cook in slowly and release all the flavor. I try not to get the vegetable too brown. Perfect. Seems like we got a good start. We're gonna let us steam it. A pinch of salt. Nice. A little bit of fresh pepper. The heat of the pan really helped to release. You see the color of the vegetable, how the, it's changing yeah. while you're braising it. So uh, I always uh, reinforce to my chefs to, to kind of always pay attention to the heat. It's not too high or too low. Each dish needs to be continuously be adjusted. Okay, while the vegetable is braising, I'm gonna slowly finishing to chop my fresh tomato, which I'm splitting it in quarters, and I'm, I'm removing a little bit of the sea, because I do want to use the uh, fresh tomato as a garnish for the sauce, and I'm cutting again julienne. And I will add this almost to the end, so the tomato will maintain their figure, will not break apart too much. Perfect, put this away. And beside the tomato, I will get some of the rosemary ready too. Fresh herbs, all is welcome in the kitchen, but if you are not available to, uh, to have a fresh herb, any of the dry herbs you can buy at the, can at the supermarket would be good. From dining here, it seems like everything is always very fresh. Do you buy from the local markets here? Uh, we do try to uh, buy uh, from the local market when the season is open or when it's available. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do um, have some contact too in outside. Uh, a lot of time I, I have requests for vegetable, perhaps uh, artichoke or some other type of vegetable where uh, we need to reach out. But uh, I find some great local company. And, uh, and when I say out, I'm talking about company just uh, outside Annapolis, which they serve the Washington market. And uh, it's been helping a lot. So the sauce coming along well. The vegetables they have been braising beautifully. At this point, I will add a, a cup of uh, white wine, dry white wine. So a nice Pinot Grigio will be good. And when adding wine to a sauce or to a vegetable to a meat, always let the wine reduce so that all the flavors stay in and the alcohol uh, evaporate. We can raise the heat a little bit now. Perfectly. I have some uh, regular tomato sauce uh, home in uh, some uh, light chicken stock. I'm going to add like a three spoon or the tomato sauce. I might, I might go three and a half. And add the chicken stock. Yeah, I would say chicken stock, you might need like a three cup. You might end up using three two cups. cup. Uh, we will see now when the sauce is ready and the chicken is roasting, once we add the sauce to the chicken, we will see the consistency 
And uh, so chicken stock is always helpful to uh, either chicken or vegetable stock. It's always helpful to have it in the kitchen available at all time. Uh, it's one of those uh, um, tools, I mean, <laughs> the last minute, yeah? To uh, adjust in the sauce or perhaps uh, reheating something. Uh, this is a great dish actually, the day after dish, because the meat soak so well the flavor. Yeah, this is a, is, a, is a perfect, so having some chicken stock, it just made it perfect the day after for uh, reheating it. Good. Coming along well. At this moment, I will put the rosemary and the fresh tomato. And the sauce at this moment, you see, I raise a little bit the heat and it's happily boiling because we are getting closer to the moment where the chicken will meet the sauce. Uh, a little bit of a parsley, chop. Good. Let's check in the chicken and see what's going on. Oh, okay. Oh, look pretty nice. It's great. The chicken roast nice. And I will do the same thing with the chicken too. I will put it back in the stove, getting a little bit of heat going again. I will refresh and with a, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And okay. Oh, beautiful. Nice. So this is like a between 15 to 20 minutes up to the heat and the different type of oven each home has. Now the sauce coming along well. Let's see so for some flavor before. Perfect. Okay. We have the sizzling. So at this moment, I will let the sauce meet the chicken. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Coming along very well. Okay, now we are perhaps maybe 10 minutes away for being ready. I will let the chicken simmer and I go back to the polenta. Okay. And uh, once we get the polenta, I believe we're gonna be almost ready assembling the dish. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I got the polenta in a plastic container, nice, nice and chill. And the polenta creates a little bit of a skin on top. Mm -hmm. So what we do is uh, turn it upside down to the other side is nice and smooth. That's the polenta you started. So yeah. this, this one, how long has this been sitting? Oh, sitting? this is like, uh, it might need like maybe two hours. Two hours, okay. Yeah. And it's something very simple. You can do it the day before. Uh, you can use it for many other things. Actually, we have a dish in my hometown, which uh, is a polenta lasagna. So. Right. Never heard of that. <laughs> I remove the end and I do slices like a half an inch. And once I did the slice, I remove a little bit of the dry skin. And then if you have a griddle at home, which I'm gonna use the one I have here in the line, uh, or in a barbecue, or in like a non-stick pan, non -non -stick pan. What we're gonna try to create is a nice coat in the polenta, okay? Okay, tell me where you're gonna do that. Uh, I, got a, I got a griddle in a, like 375, 350 okay. degree, and I just put it down. It 
it's almost like making uh, a pancake is very important the temperature and the timing for the polenta for grilling so it's one of the things sometimes I'm not that good at making pancakes so hopefully I get the polenta right <laughs> you get a nice spatula and uh, you're gonna test it very softly while it's, it's cooking and you will remove it only when bars have pop pop <laughs> seems like I got the polenta is coming along good and it's definitely something like a, a little bit of a pa uh, patient because uh, the heat reacts di differently so it's a nice color, it gives a nice uh, sourness in a way as a, as a flavor With the, the chicken really looking good. That's all yeah, the chicken great. is coming out very, very good. And uh, I mean, this is a perfect dish where, with a nice patio, beautiful day, either fall or winter or uh, in the summer, it go perfect. So the polenta is coming out pretty good. And uh, I have a a big platter. Yeah, a big platter. Either way, you can serve it as a each plate. But what I, like, I always love uh, when I cook at home as a family style. Yes. So uh, a big, nice platter. Putting down the polenta to the side. Beautiful. I will get my my tongue. Okay, and let's get excited now. Beautiful. At this moment, we will put the sauce right back to the stove just a second just to make sure the consistency is good and the flavor so I will let's see if I pass the test Great. perfect I pour the sauce and I use a spoon because I, I want to make sure that the vegetable and the juice go equally on. And uh, the veggies, you see, they didn't overcook. They all maintain their shape. A little bit cleaning. I will put a little bit extra virgin olive oil on top, just to shine in it. A little more of a parsley and just to presentation. There we go. Voila! Wonderful. Chicken cacciatora. That's great. Uh, it, if we get to be here 20 years from now, we will call it Chicken Tabo. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with Jeannie Friedman, who is co-owner of Scosa Restaurant. And I want to tell you, we just had a wonderful luncheon that uh, Giancarlo prepared for us, Chicken Cacciatore. I know you were busy in the front of the house. So you run the front of the house and, and Chef runs the back of the house, right? Yes. My sister, Tally Tunning, also, she also runs the front of the house. So we both take part in, like, Daily operation. Now you're tw you're twins? No. You're no. okay. You're lucky. <laughs> She's a little older, but that's a nice compliment for her. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you found Easton. Well, before uh, we actually opened up Scosa, I used to come here with my husband, Ron Friedman, just um, Easton on vacation to visit his family. And then um, when they decided to quit their job, the chef Jim Carlton and Ron Friedman. 
we choose East End to be the place where we should open up our restaurant because it's a very family-oriented town. Well, and this used to be Rowan's stationery store for years and years and years and years and years. And they went out of business when uh, another competitor moved into town. And the building sat empty for years. And everybody was so thrilled to see the construction start in 2005. Mm -hmm. So tell me your ideas for the name and the design. Okay, well, the name, I could give you a little bit of the name. The, um, Giancarlo, the chef, and my husband, Grant, they both had very successful job in New York City and when they decided to put Working for Ritz Carlton and a Cipriani. Oh, it's a very famous New York restaurant. That's right. And so when they decided to quit their job, they wanted to come up with a name that will um, probably shock their employer to at the same time that they're quitting their job to open up this restaurant. So they came up with the name Scosa and that's what Scosa means surprise shop. That's a great name. Yeah, it's catchy. And the design here? Design, um, it was mostly with um, Jamie Meredith from Brunkville and Grant Freeman. They did the interior, come up with the style and the sketch how they wanted the whole restaurant to be. The artwork is actually from my honeymoon, so um, we blow it up and have it all over the restaurant. So besides the dining room that we see here, you also have a very large party room in the back. That's right. And a, and a bar. Mm -hmm. Well, I've enjoyed coming here for lunch and dinner. What's your favorite entree? That is a tricky question. <laughs> um, I like um, the pasta bolognese, that's my favorite, um, but everything on the menu is really good. So you should try it all, and then you can decide on your favorite. That's great. This is Will Howard signing out. I hope it's good. Good, yeah. I don't know. Thank you.